Good morning. And it is 9 a.m. here at Skyview Presbyterian Church, and I'm all by myself making this recording to you. The weather has turned very bad in a very short period of time. When I arrived earlier this morning, it really wasn't all that bad. Some snow on the ground, uh, but the sm snow has now started to fall pretty heavily and the wind is blowing. And I'm glad that the elders canceled in-person services this morning so that uh, we all can just stay home and, and be warm and comfortable and safe. But before I uh, uh, leave uh, this building this morning, I wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up on the next two studies from 1 Corinthians, because it's going to touch on something that I personally haven't really given a lot of time to in terms of study, but it's being forced upon us as we go verse by verse through this book. And that is the subject of rewards. In uh, this coming sermon and the ser sermon after that, in these uh, this chapter, uh, Paul is going to mention the subject of rewards. In chapter 3, verse 8, he mentions that each one will receive his wages according to his labor. And in the next section, which we're going to take up the week after, uh, there is another reference to the idea of rewards. And what I'd like to do is just to get you to think about it in advance. We're going to consider the subject of rewards. The language that Paul uses is wages, which is interesting when we celebrate the doctrine of justification by free grace, that it is all of God. No human works are involved. God's grace to us is a free gift by the gift of faith as well. So it's all of God from start to finish. And yet the language here is the language of wages, the language of rewards. And what I'd like you to do is just start to think about it. I'm going to read some verses in the sermon that we're going to consider next week from uh, 2 Timothy and from 1 Peter and from James. Listen to this language. Paul says, henceforth, henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. In 1 Peter 5, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. James, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. And then Paul also mentions the victor's crown in 1 Corinthians 9. Uh, you know, what is this? The idea of crowns or the crown, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the crown of life. I always thought that God gave glory and righteousness and life the moment that we believed. That's true, that the Bible affirms that, but what is this future orientation? Well, Paul seems to think that there is a dimension of future rewards that is built into Christian service. So what I'd like you to do is to look at those verses from uh, 2 Timothy 4, 8, 1 Peter 5, 4, James 1, verse 12, and also 1 Corinthians 9, 25. And look, look, look at those verses. Think about them. Meditate on them. Do a little bit of reading and perhaps some cross-referencing. And uh, let the inspired text instruct you and maybe even expand, as it did for me, uh, some of your own thinking on the subject of the Christian life and Christian service. Um, so I commend that to you. And God willing, next week, we'll consider this text uh, for the subject of our own learning and edification. God bless you.